So the main theme of this video is going to be not only solitude, your time by yourself, but also the quality of your relationship with yourself. And I'll even kind of like integrate a third element of that, which is really taking so much time by yourself that you get to have a deep understanding for what it is that you actually want in your relationships with other people. Um, I was having a conversation with a friend um, around a month ago, maybe two months ago, and I was realizing that I have just had relationships to have relationships, right? Um, and I realized that it was from a place of fearing being alone, right? And the fascinating thing about fearing being alone is that it leaves you in a really vulnerable place in terms of the relationships that you do have. And when I say vulnerable, I mean unhealthy, right? Um, there becomes a level of desperation for a relationship that you carry with you that can really mess you up. Um, I have been desperate before um, in different ways uh, throughout my life. And um, it's just fascinating because like previously the way that I used to go about life myself and relationships was that I would tie my worth to my relationships, right? Um, I didn't see my worth as intrinsic the way that I do now. I saw it as um, something that was derived from out there, right? Um, if somebody liked me, I tied my worth to their perception of me, their opinion of me, rather than being grounded in, you know, just who I am, right? Um what I have learned about self-worth being extrinsic is that it is totally um, <laughs> bass backwards. <laughs> it is. It's, it's totally, it's upside down. Um, and again, because, you know, when you tie your worth to things externally, you experience a lot of ups and downs in life because then you probably are anxiously attached to them. And then when you lose them, you feel worthless, right? So it's a game of um, worthy, worthless, worthy, worthless, worthy, worthless. I've lived that way and I don't want to live that way anymore. Right. And I'm starting to spend more time by myself and realizing that, well, if I can just cultivate a relationship with myself where I love the hell out of myself. Right. And I really do the work to recognize what it is that I want for myself and then also what it is that I want for my relationships, I'll be in a drastically better place than I ever have before, right? Now, let me dive a bit more into this whole thing of what I want for myself. Um, I've had multiple PhDs in codependency, especially in earlier parts of my life. Um, and there have even been times where it's been, you know, somewhat recent and everything. Um, if you are doing something because somebody else wants you to do it, but you don't really want to do it, you're not really doing for yourself. You're doing for them, right? And that becomes problematic. Um, that becomes, honestly, what I would argue to be unhealthy, right? It's important that you know who you are. It's important that you know what you want. It's important that you know why you're doing what you're doing. And the why element as to me doing what I'm doing or what I have done has been absolutely crucial for me. I used to run away from myself. I used to run away from solitude. I used to run away from being alone. I know why. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Um, but it's just, it's, it's fascinating because spending time by yourself is what I would argue to be one of the most important things anybody can do right um it's really important to get to know yourself um especially if you have an underdeveloped sense of self which actually a lot of people do uh people that are emotionally immature um i wouldn't say 
everyone that is emotionally immature. I, I'm really not trying to generalize because even like generalizations are kind of like emotionally immature. Um, but what I've learned about emotional immaturity is that it has so much to do with a lack of healthy boundaries, right? Um, people that lack healthy boundaries, they tend to have an underdeveloped sense of self, right? They, they, they lack a healthy sense of self. And because of that, they tend to just like do things that other people want them to do that they don't want to do themselves and I've had multiple years of experience with that I really have Um, and I'm also severely disinterested in continuing down that path it's not something that I want to do Um, really getting to know myself is the most important thing right why do I do what I do and really asking myself if that's what I actually want to do, you know? Um, So let's kind of like recap here a little bit just to, you know, see what we explored. Um, Solitude is important because taking time by yourself really helps you develop a relationship with yourself. Um, Oh, something else that I want to add. (laughs) Very important. Understanding what it is that you value, right? Like throughout my entire life, I didn't realize that I have unconsciously valued things because of ways that I've been raised. Like I have unconsciously or subconsciously valued chaos, right? When I say chaos, I mean just like, yeah, um, you know, drama and gossip, right? Um, dysfunctional and unconventional ways of outgoing, um, about relationships, right? Um, what I am learning to value now is peace, um, authenticity, vulnerability, um, individuation, differentiation, uh, the opposite of enmeshment, healthy boundaries. Um, and not only that, but also like in other individuals, healthy boundaried individuals, which it's kind of wild because when you learned the opposite it's it can be challenging to like value the other way around right when um when you learn enmeshment it can be challenging to value peace and um individuation and differentiation and boundaries right a lot of people that are in systems of enmeshment to this day right um, they value that pseudo intimacy rather than authentic, genuine connections with people where, um, people take you into consideration. They respect your boundaries. They, you know, this, that, and the other, really the, 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 I would say the biggest important, the, 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 the most important element of solitude is really getting to know yourself. Um, because I would argue that if you're scared of solitude, maybe you have, and I'm not claiming this as truth or as fact. I'm not trying to tell you what you are, who you are, what you should do. Um, if you fear solitude, you might fear being alone, being by yourself, right? And if that is the case, you might also lack a developed sense of self. And you might think that you need things and people outside of you to fulfill or to complete you or to complete that when you really don't. And even if, and if you, if you did have those people and those things outside of you to fulfill that, to complete that, your life would be drastically more chaotic than it is. Um, Something that I'm really still learning to appreciate is peace. And I know that this might sound strange. Truly, I know it might sound strange, but something that I'm really learning to appreciate is peace. Um, And I'm also learning to choose people that are peaceful rather than that are chaotic and dramatic and gossiping and, um, you know, enmeshed in everything. Um, I'm learning to appreciate these other elements that are challenging to appreciate, especially when you're not raised, when, when, when you 
didn't learn that stuff growing up, you know, especially in, you know, like uh, friends, friend groups and all that stuff. Um, I might make a part two to this because there could be more things to talk about. But for now, um, cultivating a relationship with yourself is crucially important. Um, learning more about yourself. There's a lot to learn about yourself. Um, understanding what it is that you actually want in your relationships. You know, I've realized that a majority of the relationships that I've held throughout my life have actually just kind of like landed in my lap and I've just accepted them, right? Like people just came into my life and I accepted it rather than being like, well, what kind of relationships do I want to have with people? What do I want those relationships to consist of? What do I want to have exist in that intersubjective space between self and other, right? These are all questions that you can ask in your time by yourself, in your honorable solitude.